that's the that's the new argument, argument du jour to get around Bruin. And we just don't know if it's going to pass muster yet. Hopefully not. We are the Armed Attorneys. Today, we are talking about some incredible news out of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals when it comes to bump stocks. Now, there's a lot to this because we have a circuit split. We have this court's opinion and we see a path towards the Supreme Court. But we're going to break down everything that you need to know going forward. But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And today we're talking about the Michael Cargill case in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Michael, big big fan of Michael. I got mm-hmm. my license to carry from Michael. So um, this is really an incredible opinion. It is. And it's what we've been waiting for because we've had three decisions go the other way. And not only is it what we've been waiting for, it's what the Supreme Court has been waiting for, yep. right? Because they're denying cert. They're denying review on these other cases. And we'll talk through those in just a moment. Why, Richard? Well, because there isn't a circuit split. There's, they all agree. Yes. When, it, when, when, when the country circuits, when across the country, when these circuit courts start to disagree, that's when the Supreme Court gets involved. Now, that's not always true. Sometimes something's just so outrageous, they've got to go in and overturn it. Right. But for the most part... They wait until there is a split and then they say, OK, you know, this is ripe. We got to resolve this and figure out which who's right. Yeah. So we have a pretty powerful statement from the Fifth Circuit. Now, there are 16 judges on this panel, 13. And this is our majority saying uh, kind of two things here. we got three kind of whiny dissenters. We'll talk about them. But what you need to know about this opinion, I would say, distills down into kind of three little boilerplate points. First, they say basically the ATF has overturned a longstanding rule of not considering bump stocks machine guns. So I think that's kind of the the big takeaway here. Then they say that the technical definition of machine gun and bump stock, they're, you know, that's not a machine gun based on the definition. Right. And remember, it was Obama's ATF that first came to that conclusion. Yep. Um, I mean, right. Great friend of guns, Barack Obama. Right. No. I mean, if if Obama's ATF came to that conclusion. What happened years later when they did the exact same analysis and came to a different conclusion? Yeah. Right. It's fishy. Yeah. It kind of seems result oriented. And a lot of folks cite the, you know, shooting in Las Vegas. But to this point, I don't know that any report has been released saying that a bump stock was actually used. Right. But I mean, but it was that that, of course, prompted President Trump Trump to basically give the directive, like, find that these are machine guns. We need to do something about it when it really wasn't the ATF's job. It was Congress's job if you wanted to do something about it. And Congress didn't do it. No. So we have this overturning of longstanding tradition, it not meeting the technical definition of machine gun. But then the court even falls back even further and says, you know, even if this definition, you know, let's say it does meet this technical definition, there's an ambiguity here and we have to rely on the rule of lenity. And what is that? So when you've got a rule that's ambiguous, like we're arguing the bump stock rule is, you have to interpret the rule in the way that's most favorable to the criminal defendant here in this case, right? In this case, that should mean, wow, if it's ambiguous whether or not bump stocks actually do qualify as machine guns, you need to interpret it in the favor of Mike Cargill, which is what the Fifth Circuit has done here. Yeah, exactly right. So that's our 13 out of our 16 judges uh, kind of take that position. One, not meeting the technical definition and also the rule of lenity. Yeah, and I like the not meeting the technical definition a little bit better because I'm not sure that, and and I get it, I get they also want to say, look, rule of lenity applies here. Um, I don't think that this rule is ambiguous necessarily. I just think it's wrong. Yeah. Um, But they say, look, you know, because we're not sure if this is, you know, manipulating the trigger by the firearm's own internal function or by an outside human function, that's why it's ambiguous. Look, it helps our case. So I guess I'm into it. But really, I prefer like, this just doesn't make sense. You can't do this, which yeah. is, you know, the I think the more powerful argument. Yes. And so we got our majority here. Then we have this kind of, I would call them unsolicited concurrences where they lean more on lenity and give some guidance to the Supreme Court saying, you know, and, and they use a comparison to designer drugs kind of escaping the rule of Congress and essentially saying, hey, guess what? Congress could regulate this if they wanted to. Mm, I don't know if Congress, if the Congress could infringe in that manner, but that's what this concurrence is saying. Well, in a pre-Bruin world. Right. But again, we've got this argument that's untested that people are making right now, which is, yep. is a bump stock a 
arable arm, which I think that the, if the government wants to regulate, the government's going to say, nah, this yeah. isn't an arm. This is an accessory. This Because that, 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 that's the, that's the new argument, argument du jour to get around Bruin. And we just don't know if it's going to pass muster yet. Hopefully not. And then we got this kind of whiny dissent that seems very result oriented. It seems like they made up their mind first. That's what really, yes, nothing makes me angrier than reading an opinion and seeing that it's very, very clear that the judge or justice decided what they wanted to happen and then justified the law to to get the result that they wanted. Yeah. And that's obviously what happened here. And look, in this opinion is very long and everybody had to have their voice because the Fifth Circuit knows that this is going to be considered by the Supreme Court. So oh, yeah. everybody wants their special argument. Everybody wants to contribute because they know this is going to be a big deal case. Dissent included. And so what we've got is a dissent saying, Look, we've got McCutcheon's, and that's our 11th Circuit case where the 11th Circuit said you can regulate bump stocks this way. We've got GOA v. Garland. That's the 6th Circuit saying, yes, this is what we're doing. We've got a Potion v. Garland, 10th Circuit. Again, you know, sort of um, they're basically saying, look, everybody else has decided otherwise. And we are um, doing the entire country a public safety disservice by, you know, saying that these are not machine guns. And they go through first before they even go there. They go through this whole argument about why the rule of lenity doesn't apply and you could have interpreted it without the rule of lenity and that interpretation would fit with these other circuits. But then they really give themselves away at the end when they start talking about Las Vegas and, you know, we are uh, legalizing now and we should not be legalizing this device that helped the Las Vegas shooter fire over a thousand rounds during an 11 minute long attack shooting nine bullets per second and killed 58 people. Um, essentially, we are, and they say this verbatim, here it is, our court uses lenity to legalize an instrument of mass murder. That's what tells me that they aren't using the law to form an opinion. They've got a formed opinion, and then they are backing up and saying, you know, look, this is why we are justifying what we wanted to do anyway, because this right. is a very emotional paragraph. And it doesn't make sense other than just looking at it as this is a results oriented dissent. Right. Right. But, you know, I think this is going to be quite interesting because we have, you know, the circuit out of Florida, out of Colorado and out of Ohio. I mean, these aren't liberal strongholds, these circuits. And we see the Fifth Circuit, obviously. I mean, that's a pretty strong opinion, 13 to 3. Uh, but it is definitely going to make its way to the Supreme Court. Now, I haven't seen, um, uh, you know, the the government at this point move for certiorari to get certified to go to the Supreme Court. Currently, as it stands so far, the Fifth Circuit has essentially entered an order that's going to direct the lower court to say, hey, you know, this rule violates the technical, you know, there's no technical ma mismatch here. The statute does not meet all the administrative requirements in order for, for Congress to go through and make this definition all that process needs to take place that this law essentially needs to be removed from the books. But before then, we're going to see an appeal. Uh, yes, of course. There is no chance that the government does not appeal this. Um, and I, I'll just go out and say it. There's no chance the Supreme Court doesn't take it up. No, no. I mean, with this severe of a circuit split, it is virtually guaranteed. Now, as a practical matter, let's say you live in the Fifth Circuit. You live in Texas, Louisiana, one of these other states. You wanted to acquire a bump stock or, you know, go out and buy a bump stock. I don't think we're going to see any manufacturers. No, or maybe like dig yours up from the backyard tub that you buried it in. Or maybe know. it hasn't rained in a while and the um, lake is, <laughs> the, the water in the lake has gone down. But the, uh, a, as a practical matter, the Fifth Circuit has ordered the lower court to enter this order. It hasn't happened just yet. But between now and then, we are going to see uh, probably a stay and, a, and an attempt to remove it to the United States Supreme Court. So... It, they're not going to. Yeah, they're not going to be available for purchase yeah. until this is all resolved. I mean, that's just that's it. Yeah. Right. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button and help us fight the anti 2A algorithm by sharing this video. And please question and comment for us below. Do you think that bump stocks should be legal and lawful in the United States? Um, even gun people are split on this. So let us know. And until next time, we're the armed attorneys.